so today some things have definitely changed. Um, I did a little bit of a community thing on the Discord where I said, hey guys, I am in voice channel. If you guys want to hop on the Discord and hang out and chat with me, go ahead and do that. And I also hosted a little bit of a live stream over on the Discord, which is actually kind of cool. It allows me to interact with you guys in a different way, which is uh, really fun. Um, so if you guys want to know how to join the Discord and be able to, you know, have a potential of doing things like that, um, check the description down below. It's an awesome place. It's like a chat forum kind of thing. Um, it's a lovely app. I think we have over 10,000 members now who are actively a part of it. Super fantastic. But anyways, I went ahead and built these two things. You're wondering, well, where did my farms go? Why did I get, why did I build the farms to just remove them? Because I, I, I totally disregarded the fact that immersive, uh, engineering is in here. I don't know why, but I totally just like blinked on the fact that immersive engineering was in here. Also, I did finally go to the beneath and kill that pesky dragon that we've been dealing with for a while. And uh, it nearly killed me, but I didn't realize it was a tier four dragon. So we ended up getting a, a dragon egg that is bronze. I don't know if I'm going to bother with it um, as we already have our emerald dragon that I want to work on, but we might, we might do that. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know it was a tier four. It had over 2000 health though, which is crazy. And also it does more damage and picks you up and causes all kinds of shenanigans. As you can see, I've also been trying to eat more food. I now have more hearts which is great. And also have the strength pet now, um, which we got this a long time ago, but it gives me a strength boost. It makes me even more powerful as if I wasn't powerful enough, right? <laughs> now I'm even more powerful. Um, so I went in, like I said, built these buildings. I also got another mob area set up um, down here to uh, be able to spawn mobs as we need them. So I can just collect them and uh, you know they're already ready to go. I just need to put them in here and this is going to collect the, the drops from them. So say we need a special mob drop like steak or something like that from a cow, we can just throw the cow in here and we can get ourselves steak, which is something that I actually really want to do um, is definitely have a bit more uh, steak because we're going to need that for feeding our dragon later on. Anyways, let's talk about why I removed the farms. Well, that's because garden cloches are a thing, right? Um, garden cloches are amazing. I completely forgot about them. And, uh, this pack makes it really easy to get into it. We don't even need to go through the prerequisites in order to make this thing. I've already done some of these things off camera, like, uh, making the, um, the compactor, the compactor allows me to make plates. I put the compactor downstairs and I've already made some nickel and iron plates, which are pretty much the only thing we need, right? So I have my nickel plates and I have iron plates. And I already have some of these mechanical components already. The iron plates, I think, are still down here. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, they're right here. Um, so there's my iron plate. So, yeah, this is really simple. I don't even have any augments in here. I just upgraded them just to make it a little bit faster. Um, but, yeah, all of this is functioning just fine. Maybe wondering why I'm running back and forth when I have this. I'm just trying to stick with a certain place for crafting. Anyways, garden cloches. Requires vacuum tubes. We need some glass and redstone. I don't know how much glass we have. We have a little bit. And redstone. We actually don't need too much to get started with this. I kind of want to do a specific setup in order to get this working. And I do have a little bit of treated wood that I got later on. Um, but I want to actually buy some treated wood. Uh, well, actually, I thought I was. Let's go ahead and complete a quest, apparently. There we go. Um, and treated wood. So yeah, we can actually buy this stuff and it's by 32. I also noticed we have dog training treats that we can buy like 32 of those and just train our dog like crazy. Pandora, you're going to be so fast at level like you, you're yeah, you're a super dog. You, oh, I have to upgrade treats. Apparently, apparently I need to do that. So. I need a stick and what can we actually level up with Pandora? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to give this. Give, give our lovely dog. Um, <laughs> maybe make them faster. Can we do that? Um, level five is apparently we have 20 levels or 18 points. I can't add to the writing. Okay. So apparently that's this. High as that goes. Quick healer, and then I don't know. Um, rescue dog. I swimmer dog. There we go. And 
That is fine with me. Do I need to accept anything? I don't remember. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. And we're good. I think Happy Eater is another one we could probably put a point into. Alright. You're good, Pandora. You're a super dog now. You're level 20. You're, you're crazy super dog. Anyways, enough of that. <laughs> Let's get into Clocious. Um, so, we're also going to need a blueprint for this. For the vacuum tubes. It is a specific one called Crafting Components. So you need to find the one that is for Crafting Components. This is the one. And then now we can throw this in here and actually make the parts. We are missing one thing though, and that is um, copper wire. And the copper wire, you can stick with the version that is um, from uh, Immersive Engineering, or you can actually go with the copper wires from this mod, which I think is a little bit easier. You don't have to bother with you know cable snips. So copper wire, we'll go ahead and grab some of that. And we're ready to go. We're ready to make some vacuum tubes. Look at that. And you make so many. It's just, that's insane how many vacuum tubes you make. And the last thing we need to do is just make a couple of these. And we have ourselves some garden cloches. Um, now, what do we need to power these? Well, I would say some conduit. Um, some, some pressurized fluid conduit will work. Um, we're going to need a sink, of course. Not a sonk, a sink. Wow. And then uh, some points for power. Uh, I think it's going to be the the best way to transfer power around for this. And so, yeah, today's going to be a little bit more of a techie, techie episode. Um, we're also need some dirt and some seeds. And I, you know what? While I'm here, and since we have Inferium, I should go ahead and just make, if we can, the top tier seed, right? Um, so upgrading... Through this, we're going to need not a master, even though that's what we're going to work towards. We need an infusion crystal. Now, I don't know if the garden cloches can grow um, agri-craft seeds. Um, I don't know. We will have to test that later on. And uh, we can potentially get into a little bit of agri-craft and see. Uh, but agri-craft is a great way to definitely duplicate seeds. That's a, it's a great way and also make some incredibly powerful, uh, seeds that produce a lot of resources. So yeah, you can get like 10, 10, think of it as like the chickens mod. If you've ever played with that, how you can 10, 10, 10 chickens, you can also 10, 10, 10 these seeds and get incredibly fast growing seeds that produce a lot of resources. So that is something that, uh, we can definitely do. So mystical agriculture, um, I'm wanting to upgrade this and then i'm going to need the crystal right so to see this this crystal is what i need so well, there we go so we have an infusion crystal um let's get ourselves mystical agriculture i do have some supremium now that i look at it so is this used to make a master oh my gosh we can make a master because we did kill a boss so we now have just a master infusion crystal for automation, though, you do need more than one. Um, even if you're using something other than this for automation, you usually need more than one. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, let's go ahead and make a bit of this. Just enough to, I think, make the seed that we're going for. So there we go. And of course, the premium. Um, so, yes, we don't need the crafting seed, but we do need these seeds. So we have the tier one, two, three, four, and five. So you're going to get more seeds based on, you know, how you go through this. And you have to tier up each time. Of course, we're going to need this. And then I'll go ahead and craft a tier two. Then I can say tier three, I need this. Going to help me go up through the tiers. Tier four. I only have one, which I think I need a whole bunch more than that. So we're definitely going to need more of this. And we're going to work on getting more and more and more as we go. So setting this bad boy up is actually pretty straightforward. We go ahead and pull this and fix that. Every time I go to different dimensions, that has to be reset. So I'm planning on putting them in this 
little room. It looks a little bit different than in the other building. Um, I have another thing I want to do over there. Um, but yeah, this thing should be pretty simple to set up. If you place it down, you're going to notice a few different things about it. Um, one is it got a bunch of different ports. This is a port here. This is some kind of weird thing. You may not know what it is. Like, what does this thing do? What does this port do? What does this port up here do? All these things do different things. So this right here on the bottom, that is a red a redstone input. Um, and you can actually put a lever here to turn this cloche on and off. Um, these, I believe, are other power uh, ports, I think. I think that's what these are. Um, this is a power port. And then right here is a input for the water. And this right here is an output. Um, so yeah, and you can change this, I think, with the hammer. Um, if I remember correctly. Anyways, this is just basically how I always set this up. Um, if I'm going to do this. So inside here, we need power. Of course, that's where this is going to come in handy. Slap the power on the top. And we should get power. Make sure we have power, because we might not even have power. I didn't even think about that. Is our power gone? That power's gone. My lava should be still producing power. But it's not. That has power. Why does my point not have power? What's going on with my plug? Plug doing something weird? What's going on with you? Anyways. Oh, maybe it needs to be running to show the power. I I have no idea. Let's let's just make sure it's working and make sure I don't need um No, it's got it's got full power. There it goes. I was seeing it wrong. I was looking at this. I don't know why I'm being derpy today. Anyways, speaking <laughs> of being derpy, um let's go ahead and place a sink. This is going to be our infinite water supply, and that's where our pressurized fluid conduit is going to come in handy. And we're just going to we're just gonna extract and insert into here, and that's going to give us everything we need. So we should be good, right? We need dirt, and we need our seed, and that's going to start working. At least it should. Um, and hopefully it works fast enough-ish. Fast-ish. Um, and with this, I can go ahead and place a drawer on top. And that should put Inferium in here. Now, we might also get some excess seeds that might happen. Um, if that happens, of course, we can, yeah, do something else with it. Um, so how much do we have in here? Do they give us? They did not give us 32. That's our stack limit. I, I wish there was a way to see it. Usually it would show, but that's not showing. I'd have to put the, uh, the key on there that shows the number. Anyways, um, our bottle, time in a bottle. This is something that we can use, though. Right? That speeds things up. That definitely speeds things up. That's going pretty fast. Okay. <laughs> so that's definitely going pretty fast when, uh, when you give this thing a little bit of a speed boost. Now, you can give it fertilizer, which is something that I might do, which is bone meal. Um... We have tons of bone meal. And bone meal will definitely make this thing grow a little bit faster as well. Uh, you'll have a fertilizer amount. And the growth will increase depending on... The growth speed will increase depending on the fertilizer amount. So yeah, you can see the the growth modifier just went up to 1.25. Yeah, and we're going to get a bunch of this. Which is good. Because we need a bunch of this. And as we were going and doing things... Of course, this is going to... Why is it blinking? That's weird. Is it... It's actually moving. I've never seen it do that before. Now it's stopped. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Let's go ahead and automate a little bit of a, a process here. I want to see if we can't get this... To go a little, like, just be able to automate, like, Supremium maybe out of this. Over here. If this will be fast enough. I just don't know if this is actually fast enough here. I was hoping it would be a little bit faster than this, but it doesn't seem to be as fast as I thought it was going to be. So I kind of have this plan to have everything start auto-crafting inside this uh, crafter here. And so I want to have the Inferium Essence um, just kind of go through the rounds. Now... It's not going to, I think, work off of just one. So we might just have it right for right now. Just continue making 
a single um just make continue making just the uh the step up uh the perdentium for right now so let's have this always active extract always active all of these set to extract always active and before i set this to insert i do want to start kind of expressing how i want to have these start crafting um so mystical agriculture we can take our inferium crystal and kind of start working with this um a little bit so our first recipe is going to be with this and yeah you just need to basically say here we go and then change these um all item input slots are consumed that will be all and then results of crafting operation will go into the input buffer which is this buffer i don't want them going to the ex uh, the export not until we get to the final one so you need to make sure this is uh, set up properly and when we hit apply we get our first setup here now what i don't think hap uh, will let you uh, do uh, will it let you drag things to here no you have to have the actual item so let's see we do have a little bit of each one of these and i kind of want to see if it will work i don't think it will but you know it's it's worth a try so we're going to go from here to the next tier on this, um, which is going to be the um, uh, intermedium. So intermedium, or sorry, we need to make the intermedium. What am I doing? Doing it wrong. I need my prodentium, which, where did it go? I have no idea, but I'm gonna make me some. Cause I thought I already had some. That's how I got it. Oh no, I didn't have it, that's all right. All right, so let's go ahead and place this in here. And with that, hit apply. Oh wait, we need to actually specify insert, then apply. I love that it actually changes the color and everything in here. That's that's a really nice touch. All right, and then we go to the next step, which is the premium, which is going to be intermedium, turning into supremium. Same sets apply here. Um, these need to go into the internal buffer. Did I change that one? That needs to go to the internal buffer. There we go. So we'll set this back up again, then hit apply, and then we're good. And then we need to go from this, from the uh, Supremium to, or sorry, the Superium to the Supremium. It's <laughs> just like a whole bunch of stuff going on here. All right, so this right here, and then we have automation basically. So that to insert is, or this one, I'll set to extract. Um, But keep this Master Infusion Crystal which should work. Um, so it'll keep things like buckets and it'll stay in the input. So that should keep things like the infusion crystal, hopefully. And then I'm gonna set up a spot for each one of these items. So that way we always will have a spot for them inside this, this buffer, because we can actually lock items in here. Like this. So all of these items need to stay in here. So what we need to do is remember current items in the internal buffers. And that, when we remove it, you can see there's always going to be spots here. Perfect. Then last but not least, give it some power. That's going to be, receive a little bit of power. We can put it in slow or fast mode. That really probably doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that this infusion crystal is actually going to function properly. I, I think it requires more than one. I don't know. We, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so extract. Let's change this to insert. That should start flipping. Nope, it only needs one. So there we go. We have Superium or Supremium automation ready to go. And that's what this is going to do. And uh, yeah, we'll end up getting this as the end product. Look at that. Just blazing through this. Crazy how fast it goes. And uh, I mean, that's it. If we need any of these other materials, we can just uncraft the Supremium Essence. So it should pull from all of these here and go into this. So this might take a little bit longer to fully consume, but it will work. I don't think any seeds will get trapped in here. Let's just do one thing to make sure, just, just to make sure that that doesn't happen, is we lock it and lock, lock, lock. Okay, so that way that only fills with those items. So we shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. But look at that, the premium is building up, which is great, which means you can use it to make something like, I don't know, the sword? I mean, the premium sword, um, where is it at? Is it here? 
21 base. I think it can be enchanted. Um, it can be. So it can be fully enchanted with all of these different things. So this thing is and just as incredible as the sword we have, except for the fact that it has higher damage output, higher base damage. This thing is crazy as it is. Just imagine it with a base uh, damage of 20 something and then getting hit with Vorpal. Oh my gosh, that would be incredibly powerful. Now, what are we going to do with all this Supremium and stuff? Well, I plan on taking these cloches and expanding and having uh, storages for things that we absolutely want. And I think I want to go ahead and get some cloches set up um, for things like, I don't know, the, the water sources and lava sources that pretty much are infinite lo lava and water buckets. Um, also getting some dyes maybe and things like that so we can get some auto crafting done. I have all these garden cloches. We need to start making some seeds. So I've kind of come up with a list of uh, six items that I think are going to be some of the most uh, most efficient for us or most beneficial seeds for us to have. And uh, that's going to be the fire seed, water seed, nature seed, dye seed, nether seed, and nether quartz seed. Um, so definitely don't want to be in the nether for too much. Um, but this can actually help us set up a wither automation farm if we get this nether seed producing fast enough. Um, because this can actually produce um, soul sand, which uh, if we can get that automated, then we're golden. So I'm going to need a bunch of these crafting seeds. So this is something that definitely going to need a little bit of prosperity shards. I think I have enough. So I'm going to go ahead and make six because I think just to get these, we do need uh, six. And they're all going to be base, the least based one. So I need to make sure I have that. And there's this crafting seed. Let's go ahead and make the fire. There's our fire seed. Water seed should be... Re it's regular Inferium, looks like. Water seed. Nature seed requires these nature clusters. I've already made those. So we should be set up there. Dye seeds, though, they require a blend of dyes that I have to make. Um, so orange, of course, is going to be yellow. And I don't know how many dandelions I have. Not many. But hopefully we have enough. I can get more out of them by crushing them. So that should work. That'll get us orange at least. And we only need a few, right? Um, cyan is actually cactus. So I should probably smelt up some cactus. I might need that later on for other things anyways. So there's our cyan dye. And then I also need magenta dye, which is going to be purple mixed with pink and pink dye yeah white and red which we have tons of red so that's that's good so yeah we pretty much have everything now so that should be we should now be able to make these dye clusters and this seed is so nice to have like no joke it is one of my favorites out of all the seeds because it creates uh, dye essence, which you can use to make any color. So you don't even need to worry about what color dye. You can just craft it on the fly. Um, that that rhymed very oddly. Like that was a really weird rhyme. Anyways, so here's another tier two. We can go ahead and make that. And this one's so nice because we can just make all the nether stuff and then have a nether quartz. Okay, so this is a tier three. So we need to take it to tier two. Then to tier three. And then it's a tier three crafting recipe. There we go. So there is all of this set up and we have nine of these. Um, I think the only thing I'm going to need is some conduits, some fluid conduits just to spread the water around. Um, yeah, we'll need a couple of these and that's about it. Uh, some storage drawers, just some plain Jane storage drawers. We'll be fine. We need nine of them. One for each. And then I'm going to use some, uh, let's see, power. Don't know if I have any conduit. That's power conduits. I have this conduit, which is not what I want to use. Um, I think I have enough to make energy conduits, right? Well, let's see. Ender IO. And then I took that out, didn't I? Hmm. You know what? I could just make this version and just smelt that and just cook that up real quick and make tier two cables. Yeah, that'll be fine. 
conduit. That way we can just use... I have at there. <laughs> conduit. There we go. Um, yeah, I can just go ahead and make these. That'll be fine. That'll be plenty. And I'll just use two. Okay. So to set these up, pretty much the same thing goes. I am going to run them here, though. So one, two, three. Um, and they're going to be setting out... And I was thinking about putting them up, up against the wall, but now that I see how this is set up, I might just do them over here. Hmm, how would I do this and make this look good? I probably can't. There's no way. With the way these, these face, I could do one, two. have two of them here. And then have another one right here, maybe? I, I think, you know, who cares what it looks like as long as it's functional. You know what? That's, that's all I kind of care about. So these are not going to be mattering anyways. So let's see. I guess we can do one, two, and three. Just like this. One, two, and three. Yeah. And then we can fit all the cabling behind. So that's three, six. We have three more. You know what? I only made six of these, which is plenty. So, yeah, this this should work fine. Like I said, it's just going to kind of stick out a little bit, which might be a little bit weird. But that's okay. This is the main thing that I want to make sure is running. So I went ahead and made a wireless kit for our applied energistics using AE2 stuff. This thing is really cool, this wireless connector. It basically allows us to transfer our connection to another place and it is so simple to do so. Um, and it doesn't even use that much power. So what I want to do is I, I want to tap into this network here. And I think I want to put it right here. So what I'm going to get is some um, network, or not called network, cable anchors. Um, and that's what I'm going to need for this. Um, let's see, regular, there we go. And make myself some cable anchors. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to kind of block our connection here. And I'm just going to place it right here and right here. Um, actually, I might not need it there. I might just place this thing right here. And that should connect in. It's not connected yet, um, but that should get a connection off of this. And then we need to place this one where we want the new network to stretch to. And of course, this is going to send over the, the same amount of channels that we just um, had there which gives us a whole 32 uh, channels worth out of that uh, connection. So I'm gonna click here. This is bound here. I think you click the one you wanna send to and then connect it here. I think that's how it works, or at least connect them both. There we go. You can see it is now connected. It'll actually show you where it's connected to. Um, and power used 2000 RF per tick. I, I really hope that's not the case. That seems like a lot. There's no way it's draining that. It's not affecting your power, so I don't think that's the case. Because that, that would be a lot of power that that's got to drain. But anyways, that should connect over here. And what I want to connect up is, to, is a couple storage buses to these drawer controllers that are now connected through these. And of course, these are using oak trim to connect them together. It's honestly the one of the best ways to do it. And I do want to make some more treated wood frames to put underneath here to make it look a little bit neater. But like this is just a room set up for our automation stuff. Really, I mean, that's what it is. And there we go. And that should be hooked in. And now we should see like fire essence in our system. Fire. Am I not seeing it? Is it not working? Device online. Um, Miskel Agriculture. Am I overlooking it? Oh, there it is. So there it is. Here's all of our dye essence, or here's all of our essence. So yeah, it's working. It's working good, which means we can now cover this back up, right? Cobblestone. I dug it out. Now I got to put it all back together. Perfect. Hide it all. You wouldn't even know it's there. Look at that. And so we can pretty much do this for the entire, like this entire building over here. And that's kind of what I want to do is I want to use this one for another mystical agriculture setup. And uh, 
Yeah, take these. I could even hide these in the wall. And I might do that later on, like push these all back one and that would look a lot better is if we just push them back. And that might be something that I do later on. All depends um, because I would have to make a another Ender IO ma machine in order to hide these with conduit. Um, and conduit, it's cheap, but it's just a pain to have to, to paint a lot of blocks worth of. It really is. And it doesn't really work well with connected textures, so like this. It wouldn't work with this floor very well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this a little extra long video. You guys been wanting a little bit of a longer video. I've definitely seen it in the comments. So guys, here you go. Um, I hope you learned a little bit of something about Mizgo Agriculture and or how to automate the setup of Mizgo Agriculture Essence. It is really, really fun. And um, this is probably one of the best ways to get automated resources in this pack. So guys, I hope to see you in the next episode. And as always, Thanks for watching.